Very Father, we thank you for waking us up this morning. We thank you for allowing us to see, to walk, to think, to breathe another day, Father God. I just ask that you help us right now. And I pray that the word is good and that we be able something today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
morning. Wow. Um, I just thank God for the message that was given to me this morning. Yes, I'm a little fool. But 2023, I saw death at its worst.
to live together as brothers or perish together as brothers. Yeah. 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 A right to lay to the right and yeah. lie.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I remember the first time I heard that song. I forget which child it was. It was the first or the second. We was in the hospital. Maybe it was in labor. And she had to play a playlist. And I'm not certain. I heard that song and I started crying because I was like, this is a song that is a true, it's a prayer song. Yeah. It's a song that displays someone's personal relationship um, with God. And that's what it's worth from. It's worth from the heart of someone that knows Jesus. Um, and it really blessed me. Um, listening to that song for the first time as my wife was in pain, of course. Um, but it was, it was a blessing that calmed my spirit and I really thank God for that. I didn't ask for the song. I don't usually ask for praise, sermon songs, or nothing like that. But, um, yeah, thank God. Thank God. Um, let us pray. Father God, we come to you today asking you, O oh Lord God, requesting of you, Lord, that your will be done today. That you will come against the enemy. That you will come against all of his influences. I pray, O oh Lord God, that you will help us, O oh Lord God, today in this service to give our hearts, give our attention, give our ears to your word. Give our minds, O oh Lord God. Let nothing distract us. May the people of God, O oh Lord, leave this place, O oh Lord God, with no doubt of what's being said today. May the understanding increase, O oh Lord God, and may the challenge be set, O oh Lord God, and may they receive the challenge, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, to do what's right in your sight. We need you, Lord, every single day. We need you. Every time I think about your mercy, your forgiveness, who else can we run to, O oh Lord God, that will forgive us for the things that we've done? Who else would have mercy on us? Despite what we do. Your unconditional love, Lord, is unmatched. A spouse, a mother and father can't even compare to the Lord. And we do thank you, Lord. We run to you, Lord God, because there's no option. There's no option but you. No one else can do what you do. And we thank you for receiving us by your grace. Just have your way today as you bless your people. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 passed away not too long ago. He had a battle with it was cancer. He had cancer and um he passed. He was a good brother. He was a barber man. He used to cut my hair when I had hair. Um, he used to treat it nice. He had me looking like a receipt, and I had to let it go. Me and John was back there talking about the hair lines. Um, yeah, you know, bald people, we had that common connection. Amen. Amen. But I'm going to exhort you all really quick. I know we are talking about compassion. Um, that's the theme for this, this year, and it's a very important theme. But I wanted to remind us, and this will tie us a bit to the sermon um, that I'll be um, preaching to you all today. And uh, say what Pastor Court says, I'm not going to hold you long, but long enough to bless you, and I really mean that. At least I hope I do. Um, but Scripture says, God is the Father of compassion. So we as his children are to be like him. We know from previous lessons that God, that the word compassion means to suffer with some, someone from the inside. It's something that's birthed from the inside. You, you feel for that person so much, there's a grieving going on in the inside and it causes you to action. That is what compassion is all about. So God expects us to demonstrate compassion because he does and Jesus did during his time on earth. So our heavenly savior humbled himself so much to come to earth to suffer. Fasting, it's not about me. It's not about me. Y'all say it with me. It's not about me. It's not about me. Jesus humbled himself to come to earth. He left the heavenly ranks to come and be with us because of his love and compassion to see us receive the salvation. It took more than we could ever imagine, more than we would know. 
And fasting is about what God wants and it's for other people. When we fast, we are supposed to humble ourselves before God, opening ourselves up to be, to be used by God for him and for his people. In Isaiah 58, if y'all turn with me there, this is the, the fasting chapter of Isaiah, Isaiah 58. If you're there with me, say amen. 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 And the first verse, I'm reading from the New American Standard. It says, cry loudly, do not hold back. Raise your voice like a trumpet and declare to my people their transgression and to the house of Jacob their sins. He's telling this to Isaiah. Yet yeah, they seek me day by day and delight to know my ways as a nation that has done righteousness and has not forsaken the ordinance of their God. They ask me for just decisions. They delight in the nearness of God and this is what the people would say. Verse 3, it says, Why have we fasted, and thou dost not see? Why have we humbled ourselves, and thou do not notice? Behold, on the day of your fast, you find your desires, and drive hard all your workers. Behold, you fast for contention, and strife, and strike with a wicked fist. And you do not fast like you do today to make your voice heard on high. Is it a fast like this which I choose, a day for a man to humble himself? Is it for bowing one's head like a reed, and for spreading out sackcloth and ashes as a bed? Will you call this a fast, even an acceptable day to the Lord? Verse six says, is this not the fast which I choose, to loosen the bonds of wickedness? To undo the bands of the yoke, and to let the oppressed go free, and break every yoke. Is it not to divide your bread with the hungry, and to bring the homeless poor into the house, when you see the naked to cover him, and not to hide yourself from your own flesh, your family? Then your light will break out like the dawn, and your recovery will be speedily spring forth. And your righteousness will go before you, and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Verse 9 says, Then you will call, and the Lord will answer. You will cry, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from your midst, the pointing of the finger, and speaking wickedness, and if you give yourself to the hungry and satisfy the desire of the afflicted, then your light will rise in darkness. That sounds like compassion. And your gloom will become like midday. And the Lord will continually guide you and satisfy your desire in scorched places and give you strength to your bones. And he will be like a water garden and like a spring of water. Those waters do not fail. And those from among you will rebuild the ancient ruins. And you will raise up the age old foundations and you will be called the repair of the breach, the restorer of the streets in which to dwell. And then verse 13 through 14 says, if because of the Sabbath you turn your foot from doing your own pleasure on my holy day and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy day of the Lord honorable and shall honor it, de desisting from your own ways, from seeking your own pleasure and from speaking your own word, then you will take delight in the Lord and I will make you ride on the heights of the earth. And I will feed you with the heritage of Jacob, your father, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Amen. He has spoken. Amen. Amen. I hope y'all caught everything, but if you didn't, I'm going to break this down. In verses 1 through 5, the people were fasting, but they were not obeying him. They were fasting in a way, they were not fasting in a way that pleased God. They fasted how they wanted to fast. They did it the way that they wanted to do. And he asked them, what kind of fast would I choose? He wants you to humble yourself. He wants you to spread out sackcloth and ashes. That's how they would fast back then. They wouldn't just stop eating. They would spread out sackcloth and ashes everywhere. And they would humble themselves before, the God, before God. But 
they wouldn't show compassion to others. They didn't do it. During their fast, they worked their workers hard. Okay? The children of Israel, they had slaves. All right, they had people that they conquered, but they started treating them like how they were treated. Well, Remember when they were in Egypt, how they were treated? Uh -huh. God said, don't ever treat somebody like that. Mm -hmm. Even those that you conquer, don't treat them like how they treated you in Egypt. All right. But what did they start doing? Mm -hmm. Treating people like how they were treated in the past. Mm -hmm. So they did lose the bonds of wickedness or let the oppressed go free. This is what God is calling against them. He says, you want me to do all these things for you, but you don't want to do it for somebody else. Now, how does that work? They didn't break every yoke or give to the poor. All right. During their fast, they didn't break every yoke or give to the poor. Amen. Ironically, this is what they wanted God to do for them. They wanted God to break every yoke and he wants to. He wants to break every yoke. He wants to let the oppressed free. But God, once again, can't do for you what you won't do for somebody else. Amen? Amen. That's how it works. God can't make anything happen for us that we don't make happen for someone else. Mm -hmm. Think about that and let that marinate in your own life. Mm -hmm. We want God to give to us, but we don't want to give to others. Mm -hmm. We want God to bless us, but we don't want to bless others. We want God to be kind to us. But we won't be kind to our spouse or our children. I'm talking about myself. This is what we want. We want all these things from God. But we won't do it for somebody else. If you have employees at your job. You know they're struggling. You know, they're having a hard time. They're coming in late some days because maybe something going on at home. But you're on their back. You're being cool to them. But then with your Christian righteous self, you turn right, right around. And want God to do the same thing for you. You want him to take some of this pressure off you at work. Get your supervisor off your back. You want God to give you a raise. But you're not helping nobody else. You know how many reports I've been writing for my employees to make sure they get paid? I'm not doing it just for them. I want some of that pie too. But because they work hard, because they make me look good, I got to take care of my people. That's my mentality. I know you know, Victoria, you got to take care of your people. Especially when they're the ones out there doing the work. You may be the general, you may be directing, but they out there out front for you. Okay? Yeah. Take care of your people. Yeah. And God will take care of you. Oh, yeah. But if we do what God is saying, in verse 8, he says, he says he'll reward you. In verse 8 through 12, this, these are the rewards. God has given us this God. He says, if you do all of these things, he says, then your life will break out like the dawn. And your recovery will be speedily spring forth. And your righteousness will go before you. Here's the thing. If you're not walking in righteousness, there is no righteousness to go before you. Amen? Amen. If you're not acting with righteousness, what, what, what's going to go before you? Wickedness. Amen? God has given us a guide on how to fast properly. It's all throughout the scripture. All right, we teach you here about in faith. It's not just about turning down your plate and changing your diet. Amen. Okay? There's a certain attitude and purpose that should come with it. Yes. Compassion should be displayed. It's all written through Isaiah 58. All throughout. It says, take care of the poor, feed the hungry, clothe the naked. Then we get to the New Testament. What does Jesus say? How do we know you were naked, Lord? How do we know you were hungry? Mm -hmm. He's talking about the same thing that we see in Isaiah 58. The principles have not changed. Mm -hmm. When people are in need, God's people are supposed to step up. Oh, yes. Amen? Amen? So there's a certain attitude and purpose that, we sh that should come with the fast. We should be praying and studying more. Because fasting gives you more time to pray. Because we, the time we normally spend eating and cooking and all that kind of stuff, that should dwindle. 
And we should spend more time in prayer and studying to see what the Lord is saying to us. Like that song that you heard, that was a personal song. It's a personal relationship. God is speaking to us all personally in his own way. The quiet, still voice is there for all of us. Amen? Amen. Oftentimes, people, when they think of church leadership and leading out, they think of a position, a pastor, or elder. It's not about the title. We all can lead out in this Amen. effort Amen. of helping people that are down. In your own life, you drive in your car, you see the man on the side of the road needing food. You see the woman on the side of the road needing a coat, especially right now. You see it. It's a decision you're going to make. Am I going to help them? Or am I not going to have to? Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. So, because fasting gives us more time to pray and gives us more time to spend with God, we have to remember, I'm sorry, I'm on, I want you to miss this point. Fasting is always connected to prayer. It's not just not eating. You got to pray. If, you, if you're just not eating, you're not eating. Okay? If you, if you add prayer, then that's a true fast. But if you're just not eating, come on now. That's Okay. If you got a, a big, big business contract or you got some work you got to do, people go all day without eating when they're busy at work. Are they fasting? Or are they just not eating because they're busy? All right. When I'm chasing around my kids, sometimes I forget, man, I had to eat. Was I fasting or was I being pulled by my children so much? Okay, so the, this prayer has to be connected with the fast. You must pray more, more than you've ever prayed before. So, and Jesus expects his followers to fast. This is what's expected from Christian believers. And we see this in Matthew chapter 6. Y'all can turn with me. Matthew chapter 6. And I'm going to start at verse 16. He expects us to fast. He expects us to fast. In Matthew chapter 6. I'm in Matthew 16. Matthew chapter 6. Verse 16 through 18. Amen. Jesus says this. He says, and whenever you fast. And whenever. Whenever he that means you're gonna fast if you're a Christian, he's gonna speak to you. I know we have the body thing going on, but in your personal life, once again, there may come a time when God is saying, Hey, turn the plate down for whatever reason. Turn the plate down. And I guarantee it's not gonna be about you. You see somebody sick in the church, I'm not talking about a common cold. God may tell you, turn your plate down for them. I need somebody to pray and fast for that brother or sister. Yeah. You see people going through difficulties in their life. Maybe they have cancer, whatever it may be. Turn that plate down. Okay? Amen. When he's speaking to you personally, all right? Personally. I'm not saying every time something happens, you got to turn your plate down. Don't get that. Don't, I'm not saying that. Because you'll never eat. <laughs> I'm serious. Because you know there's something always going on. Amen. We have a small body right now. This is a small church. And there's a lot going on in here. Sure is. Now imagine if you're in a church and there's two, three hundred people. Come on now. Big with kids. With kids. Mm. Okay? Uh -huh. There's something always going on. If you, if you look at everything everybody doing, that's why God is speaking to you personally about someone. About something. Okay? It's not about you. It's about somebody else. But in Matthew chapter 6, verse 16, it says, And whenever you fast, do not put on a gloomy face as a hypocrite. Don't, don't, don't be looking sad during the fast. Amen. Don't be letting people know, oh, I'm so hungry. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> For they neglect their appearance, meaning they purposely look bad, in order to be seen fasting by men. Truly I say to you, they have their reward in full. Their reward is that attention that they're seeking. They're seeking. That's their reward. God wants to reward people yes. for the things they do in secret. Mm -hmm. And it says it here. In 17 it says, but you, when you fast, anoint your head, put the oil on, and wash your face. Wash your face. And verse 18 says that you may not be seen fasting by men, but by your Father who is in secret, and your father who sees you in secret will repay you. Another word for it, he will reward you for what you've done. Amen. When Jesus fasted for 40 days, the main reason he did it was to be obedient to God. Because Matthew 4, chapter 4, verse 1 says, he was led by the Spirit. 
He was obeying the Holy Spirit. God was saying, oh, fast for 40 days. And he fasted for us. It wasn't just for him. It was for us. It was for us and the ministry that was set before him because he knew the work, the love, and compassion, and so much more that had to come from this divine source. Amen? Amen. He knew all of this. And God honors fasting and prayer that is done in faith and to glorify him. That's the whole point. When we serve others, you get more of a response from God. We can all lead in this type of way. I keep saying it. We can all lead in this type of service. Moses fasted for 40 days, but not for himself. He didn't go up there for himself to get something. He went up there to glorify God and to provide the people of God with the Ten Commandments. God needed his attention. He needed his undivided attention. No, but it's no time to eat, drink, or do anything. I need your attention because these Ten Commandments are that important. And look how much they have affected all of our lives and this world we live in. Even America, with all that they've written for this country as far as laws, is based off of that. That's it. You think God didn't know that ahead of time? <laughs> he knew how important this was. And that's why he needed him to fast, but not for himself so he can come down shining with long hair looking good and shocking everybody. No, it was to glorify God and for the people that he had to lead. It wasn't about him. Daniel fasted in order to receive guidance from God, but not for himself, but for the people that were in captivity, his people. Amen. That's what it was all about. It wasn't about Daniel. It was about the people that he needed to guide. And he knew that time was up. If you turn with me to Daniel chapter 9, he gives us a great example. Daniel chapter 9. This is my last scripture. I promise. In Daniel chapter 9, we're going to start at verse 1. And it's even titled at the top in the New American Standard Bible says, Daniel's prayer for his people, for God's people, for his people. And verse one, it says, in the first year of Darius, the son of, I'm terrible with his name, Ahasuerus, of Midian descent, who was made king over the kingdom of the Chaldeans. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, observed in the books the number of the years which was revealed as the word of the Lord to Jeremiah the prophet for the completion of the desolation of Jerusalem, namely 70 years. Daniel's fasting, praying, and reading the word of God from the prophet Jeremiah, the word that was spoken to him about 70 years of captivity and desolation of Jerusalem. He's reading this and he's recognizing time is almost up. The seven years is almost over. It's almost over. Verse 3 says, So I gave my attention to the Lord to seek him by prayer and supplication with fasting, sackcloth, and ashes. He saw it. Time is up. I don't want to go through these seven years again. I don't want the people to go through nothing like this ever again. So what do I need to do? Give my attention to God. I'm giving myself to God for who? For the people of God. To glorify God. Amen? Amen. And verse 4 says, And I prayed to the Lord my God and confessed and said, Alas, the Lord, the great and awesome God, who keep his covenant and loving kindness for those who love him and keep his commandments. We have sinned. Not they have sinned. We, he's including himself in there, committed iniquity acted wickedly and rebelled, even turning aside from thy commandments and ordinances. Moreover, we have not listened to thy servants, the prophets, who spoke in thy name to our kings. This is very humble. He's not, he's not pushing blame on anybody. He's not saying these people are acting up. I mean, if you just read the scripture, you don't see what Daniel's acting up. When you get to verse chapter 9, you're like, he's been living right all this time, but he includes himself because he said, all men have sinned. All have come short. I know I've done something too. As much right as I've done, I'm sure 
I've done something wrong, at least in my heart. Verse 6 says, Moreover, we have not listened to thy servants, the prophets who spoke in thy name to our kings, our princes, princesses, our fathers, and all the people of the land. Righteousness belongs to thee, O Lord, but to us open shame as it is this day. To the men of Judah, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and all of Israel, those who are nearby and those who are far away in all the countries, to which thou hast driven them because of their unfaithful deeds which they have committed against thee. Open shame belongs to us, O Lord, to our kings, our princes, and our fathers, because they have sinned against thee. Verse 9 says, And the Lord our God, to the Lord our God belong compassion and forgiveness, for we have rebelled against him. Nor have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his teachings which he set before us through his servants and his prophets. Indeed, all Israel has transgressed thy law and turned aside, not obeying thy voice, so the curse has been poured out on us, along with the oath which is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, for we have sinned against him. Verse 12 says, Thus he has confirmed his words, which he has spoken against us, and against our rulers who ruled us to bring us to great calamity for under the whole heaven there has not been done anything like what has been done to Jerusalem. As it is written in the law of Moses, all this calamity has come on us, yet we have not sought the favor of the Lord our God by turning from the iniquity and giving attention to thy truth. Let me pause there. They've done all this wrong. They've seen the consequences of their wrong. And they still have not humbled themselves, directed their attention to their God to get right with him. Mm -hmm. The first step of anything that we do is we must confess our wrong. Mm -hmm. We must acknowledge our wrong. You can't just move on to the next thing. Mm -hmm. You got to get it right with God first. Mm -hmm. Amen. And they refuse to do that. What does that spell out? Pride. Before every fall. First coming, pride. Right. We have to humble ourselves. And your personal walk with God, I can't stress this enough, remove that pride. If you can't confess to God, if you can't open up to God, who do you got? He's already seen everything that you do and you think. Before you even do a thing, he knows what you're going to do. All he wants you to do is talk to him. Talk to him. Say, hey, I'm struggling. I want to do something wrong. Help me, Lord. And I bet he'll help you. He'll give you a way of escape. He'll give you a way out. Because that's what he promises. Amen? Amen? In verse 15 it says, And now our Lord, who has brought thy people out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand, has made a name for thyself. As it is this day, we have sinned and we have been wicked. O Lord, in accordance with all thy righteous acts, let now thine anger and thy wrath turn away from thy city, Jerusalem, thy holy mountain, for because of our sins and the iniquities of our fathers, Jerusalem and thy people have become a reproach to all those around us. So now, our God, listen to the prayer of thy servant, to his supplications, for thy sake, O Lord, not for my sake, but for whose sake? Thy sake. To glorify you, O God. Let thy face shine on thy desolate sanctuary. O my God, incline thine ear and hear. Open thine eyes and see our desolation and the city which is called by thy name. This is your city, God, that, way, that laid waste. That's in desolation. Glorify yourself in your city, Lord. For we are not presenting our supplication before thee on account of any merits of our own, but on account of thy great compassion. It's not about us. Our Lord, hear, O Lord, forgive, O Lord, listen, and take, account, take action for thine own sake. Take action for your own sake, Lord, to glorify your own self. This is what he's saying. O my God, do not delay, because thy city and thy people 
are called by their name. Essentially, he said, God, you got to do something. Because if you don't, you're going to look bad. Your people can't be all busted up forever. Help us out now. You've done wrong. Seven years up. Let it come through for us. And here's a reward for this fasting, for this prayer, for the seeking of the Lord. In verse 20, it says, Now while I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people, he's being honest. His attention is being given to God. He's confessing the sin of himself and his people. He's doing all the right things before the Lord. His heart is right with God. And he says, before the Lord my God, on behalf of the holy mountain of my God, while I was still speaking in prayer, then the man, Gabriel, I had seen in a vision previously, came to me in my extreme weariness about the time of the evening offering. And he gave me instructions and talked with me and said, oh, Daniel, I have now come forth to give you insight with understanding. And the beginning of your supplication, the command was issued. As soon as he started praying, the command was issued in heaven. And I have come to tell you, for you are highly esteemed. So give heed to the message and gain understanding of the vision. Say with me, God, give me a heart like Daniel. Amen. There is something. That God wants to do in your life. Individually. While you're on this fast. And whenever you fast in the future. If you want God to forgive you for something. Forgive somebody. Amen. If you want God to help you with something. You better help somebody. If there's somebody in your office. That you don't like working with. You don't like dealing with. But you want God to deal with your difficult self? I think it's best time. It's best time. You start praying and get your heart right to deal with that difficult person. Because I'm pretty sure they know they're difficult. And if they don't, they're going to find out real soon. So if you want God to deal with you kindly, if you want God to bless you, you need to do something for someone else. Amen. And this is not a tick for tack thing. Once you are walking with God and doing what he wants to do and all you're thinking about is glorifying him, half the time you're not even going to be thinking, if I give to this, he's going to give back. If I do this, he's going to do that. Your mind shouldn't be focused on that. You should be doing these things because you are trying to be obedient. You are trying to do what's right. Your righteousness will go before you. So do what's Right. Amen. Amen. This is the attitude that we need. This is the attitude we must have for this year. If we want to be compassionate, compassion is not something that comes from our natural being. It is a spiritual thing. I know Red Cross helps people. I know they do. But they're not out there glorifying God. Okay? Not to speak bad about any volunteer organization, but when they get to these other countries and other places where they're helping people, you know, a lot of those people in those places show up pregnant. Okay? A lot of those people show up being taken advantage of. A lot of those people that work for these organizations. It shouldn't be like that with us. Amen? When we step on the scene as Christians, we bring something. We bring the Holy Spirit. We bring God with us. Amen? Amen? And we come there and we mean business. Yes. So when you leave this place today, you know somebody lost in this world? Witness to them. Amen. You know somebody hungry? Feed them. You know somebody need love? They need to be accepted? Accept them. Amen? 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 You see it every day. We do. Every day. We see something. Sometimes we're not paying attention. Sometimes we're not sensitive to it because we're only focused on who? Ourselves. What we got to do and what we got to do. So while you're fasting, and when you fast in the future, remember, it's not about you. It's not about you. It's about glorifying God and his people. Amen. God will take care of the rest. He'll take care of the rest. I thank you all for giving your ear and your heart and your attention. God thanks you, I believe. I think he's going to glorify all of you. 
And I praise God for this word today. It spoke to me. I hope it spoke to you. We can all stand right now. And I'm just going to pray. If you can't stand, stand. And I'm just going to pray that God will work on our hearts. Because we need them today. The heart is desperately wicked. Desperately. Scripture says, who can know it? The answer is only God. We don't even know our own hearts. Sometimes we do things and we're hiding our intentions from ourselves. But they're revealed once we get to what we got to do. So I pray today, and this is for me too. I'm flesh, I'm human. I deal with everything y'all deal with, maybe in different ways. But we need to work on this heart. We need God to work on this heart. I just encourage everyone, give yourself more to prayer and studying of the scripture. And when you read that word, speak it aloud. Because that's God speaking into your ear. It's one thing to hear it in your mind. Speak it aloud so it can go into that ear. Right now, Lord, we come to you like Daniel asking for your forgiveness. But we have seen even early this morning something that's come to mind, something that's not right, Lord. Not important sin on anybody, saying their wickedness, but we just know what we are as humans, Lord. And we ask for your forgiveness. Humbly, Lord. And we need you, Lord, to open up our hearts, Lord. So your spirit can have free reign, free reign with our bodies. For the mind doesn't control the body. It is the spirit that gets you to do what God wants you to do. And I ask you, God, to help us to depend on you, help us to run to you, and help us, oh Lord God, to always be ready to humble ourselves before you. In your presence, pride cannot dwell. In your presence, lies cannot dwell. So I pray that today, Lord God, you will keep us from having a lying heart, a prideful heart. Work on our hearts today, Lord God, that we may approach every day with the right attitude, with the right mentality, to turn ourselves away from self, Glorified in our lives. No matter what happened in the past, Lord God, purge our conscience of dead works and help us, oh Lord God, to look to the future and keep pressing forward as Paul said. I'm going to say something today, Lord God, from the Dr. Martin Luther King that just resonates with me whenever there's a struggle. If I can't run, I'm going to walk. If I can't walk, I'm going to crawl. But no matter what I do, Because everything that lies in front of us is in the future. And you are our future, Lord. We want to spend eternity with you, Lord. And we want to bring as many people kicking and screaming with us, Lord, into your presence to receive your wonderful salvation. Have your way, Lord God, as you move in our lives. And bless these people of God that's before you. Bless our pastor, Lord God. And I pray for the work that we burn for Lord God, for all that we do, and may it glorify you. In the name of Jesus, and may it bless somebody. In Jesus' name, Lord, have your way, we pray today. Amen. 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 Thank God for you all. Any announcements, anything? The blankets today. We will be passing our blankets. I forget the time. I was going to ask when I got here. I'm going to look on the website. But we will be passing our blanks today. Sister Hines, or Sister Hines, Hogan's, um, <laughs> um, she, she will be leading out there. If you have any questions, if you go to our website, as well to get more information about what we're going to be doing today. We're helping those that are, are shivering in this cold weather today. Um, but to everyone that's online, I thank God for you. Um, 
My prayers are for those that couldn't make it because of the cold, the sickness, and things like that. Um, but I thank God for you. At this time, it's our time of offering. Um, for those that are online, if you want to go, raise your hands right now. If you need an envelope or anything, there's an hour to pass them out. Got some people over there. And um, you can go to our website at www.abidingfaithcc.org. And you can hit the Give tab. And on there is where you'll give your tithe offering. And you listen to search. Um, we thank God for you. Um, reach out to us if you need anything. I email phone numbers on that um, website as well. Thank God for you.